Paris-Saclay, who will speak about the Markov spectrum for analysis surfaces. Okay. Thank you for our invitation. Uh, right, so, so I should say this is joint work with uh, talk about today is about this uh, conjugacy rigidity or Markov spectrum rigidity. So I recall you that uh, sigma, so this would be in dimension two, if sigma is a surface of genus H bigger equal to 4. So I don't use G for genus because G would be uh, Then uh, G would be a Riemannian metric. Um, so, we will assume, uh, let us assume, that G has another flow, another geodesic flow. So, I, I don't define it, because uh, it's been defined like five times at least in the beginning of the conference. Um, in this case, the, the conjugacy class of the of, of the flow of uh, of the flow of G, if you think just uh, you view the, the flow of G inside the set of geodesic flow or another geodesic flow, the conjugacy class is determined by uh, something uh, which is called the Markov spectrum, so the length of the closed orbit, parameterized by their uh, by their homotopy class. So what is the Markov spectrum? So we take uh, C the set of free homotopy class. Which is a countable set. It's just a to topological uh, topological data. This will be one class, for instance, C1. And then there is another one here, C2, and so on. And you have infinitely many. You can learn 10,000 times here, and then 20,000 times here, and so on. Um, so what, what, what can be checked is that uh, for if uh, G is an, is an another geodesic flow, uh, if you minimize the length, if you fix uh, for fixed, uh, Uh, free homotopy class, the, the length functional, so um, there is a unique minimizer uh, for the length functional. Curve gamma, uh, which has, which is in a fit, which has a given homotopy class, and, and you look at uh, the length of gamma. Let's say it's a, it's a map here uh, from S1. So gamma is a map from S1 to a uh, surface. Okay, S1 for me is just uh, of length <coughs> so zero one. Uh, it's all mod out to Z. So you the length uh, with the usual way. And it has a unique minimizer, which is a closed geodesic. Gamma C is a closed geodesic. Uh, in the class C. 
So this is uh, easy to prove uh, in negative curvature. This is easy to prove because the the length functional is going to be strictly convex with a unit minimizer. For Anosov, it's a bit more tricky, but it's still true, using that there is no conjugate point. So I should add here that such metric have no conjugate have no conjugate point by a result of Klingenberg and Manier. Um, and now the Mark length spectrum, which is denoted by LG, is a map uh, to a class. And for each class, C, you associate the length of this uh, gamma C, which is the, the unique uh, in the fixed uh, homotopy class. So this is the Mark length spectrum. OK, so uh, the question <coughs> uh, that one can ask is uh, if LG determine the isometric class, does LG determine <coughs> the isometric class Isometric class and even uh, up to up to homotopy. Meaning that or when I okay, I, I will say what I mean by up to homotopy, but uh, the question is uh, if uh, Lg1 equal Lg2, uh, then does there exist uh, <coughs> a C from sigma to sigma homotopic to identity? Such that C star of G2 equal G1. So this is a uh, this is the natural gauge invariant. Okay. <coughs> so this was uh, this was proved uh, by uh, Coke and, and Lothar. Uh, the answer is yes. If the curvature of uh, one of the metrics is negative, so this is the ghost curvature, strictly negative. And in fact, uh, Croke has a more general result. Um, Croke has a in, in his paper actually he's. What he's proving is that uh, if uh, the flow of G1 is, is uh, conjugate to uh, the flow of G2, and what I mean by conjugate, the conjugation is not uh, orbit conjugation, it's a, tr it's a true conjugation, so it's time preserving. Then, if uh, G1 has non positive curvature, uh, then G1 and G2 are isometric. I think you still need to assume something about G2 in the first case. Like for the theorem of Crook and Hotel, you would need to assume that G2 has been non positive curvature or something like that. Uh, or maybe no conjugate points. Yeah. In his proof, yes, but in the uh, proof, no. Crook has a very general proof, actually. Okay. Doesn't assume anything about G2. Well, if you have the conjugacy, well, you already have. Yeah. Sorry? If you have the conjugacy, then you get yeah. right away that the other doesn't want, doesn't have conjugate points. Yeah. But uh, if you're just assuming the. Well, what he was proving is really G1 negative curvature and G2 nothing. Yeah, but you already have the conjugacy, which is a very strong assumption. 
But in the first case, you don't. Okay, in this case, uh, of course, I mean, just to maybe in another class. Huh? That will be sufficient. You just need con to be conjugate to. Uh, Yes. So I will, I will, I will come to, to, to this thing that there is a link between having the same Markland spectrum and conjugate. The thing is, uh, the Markland spectrum is well defined uh, if it's an Ozov, but uh, if it's just non positively curved, it's not very clear uh, how to define it because there's no uniqueness a priori uh, of this minimizer, so. or even no conjugate point. Uh, it might be a bit troublesome. So maybe in, for the general question, it's maybe it makes more sense to consider this question if the two flow are conjugate or the isometric, and then you can ask the question in a very general setting. So the okay, the result is, is has been proved for, for this for this case, and the theorem uh, that we proved with Kubo uh, and Gabriel is uh, for general Anosov. So if uh, G1 of an of the uh, digital. And, and again, I hear the dimension of signal two. That's important. boundary rigidity, which was proved by test of Anu and uh, in this for simple metric in dimension two. So somehow the Anos of condition is a little bit, it is sort of the analog to the simple condition uh, for uh, the boundary rigidity problem. But this is a bit more complicated somehow. This implies actually the boundary rigidity. Yeah, this implies uh, <coughs> the boundary rigidity. <coughs> Metric by by, uh, by work uh, of uh, Thibault and Ashinko. Uh, okay, so let me explain a bit the proof. Yeah, there is a part of the proof uh, which is due to Katok actually. First, uh, Katox result. Katox shows that uh, if uh, G1 equal exponential rho G2, this rho smooth function, and, and say uh, both are another. And this proof works in any dimension, actually. Uh, then, if uh, LG1 equals LG2, uh, it means that rho is zero. The proof is very simple, actually. Um, it's based on the Holder uh, or Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Uh, and, uh, the, the case of equality uh, in further. So maybe I don't, I don't write the proof here, but I, I recommend this, this paper because it's really, it's like a four line proof and very elegant. So from, uh, I think it's 88. 
And uh, he wrote it in a negative uh, coverage case, but his book works very well in the case. There's no, no difference. So now the, the main question is, uh, can, we, can we show that the mark and spec, so here it means you, 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 you can determine a conformal factor. Now the question is, can you determine the complex structure of the surface of our class from the mark and spec curve? This is what remains. And we are in dimension two, so this is a two dim this is a finite dimensional problem in some sense. The <laughs> structure is a dimensional space, which is finite dimension. So it should not be very hard. And, uh, this was in this was, uh, this is something that uh, I put in in uh, Thibault's uh, thesis subject, uh, and uh, we couldn't solve it uh, <laughs> at that time, but now we we managed to find a nice argument. Um, so it doesn't sound so complicated, but actually uh, it's really quite tricky <laughs> to find the complex structure. And you'll see the proof is uh, not that simple. Um, and we got inspired by, uh, by the proof of uh, Pestoff and Ullmann for simple metric, in some sense, but combining also with some, uh, with some idea by Otam, section pairing. Okay. So, we know how to recover the conformal factor if we can prove the uh, complex equivalent. So now the question is, uh, how does LG determine the complex structure? Or complex means here. My okay. I, I haven't said that. Uh, I assume uh, sigma is oriented. Or if it's not oriented, uh, one can still prove the result by passing through cover. But, uh, let me assume it's oriented. Then the complex structure is equivalent to the conformal structure. Uh, of G. Theorem uh, by uh, Torelli. And to be honest, I don't really understand the proof. I haven't really read the proof carefully. You can find it in the book of Paracas, uh, I think. Torelli, the theorem of Torelli, which shows that uh, the period matrix. Determine the complex structure and I will tell you what is the period matrix. But uh, not the Teichmuller not the Teichmuller class so. so here when I mean complex structure it's really uh, up to diffeomorphism, and the diffeomorphism is not necessarily homotopic to identity. So it's really the complex structure as an element in the moduli space. In fact, uh, an intermediate covering between moduli and Teschmuller, which is the quotient of Teschmuller by the Torelli group. So what is the period matrix? You take your surface, let me take a genus to surface, you take a, a symplectic basis for the homology, You take uh, two cycles like this, two cycles like this. The, ho the first uh, homology group is a symplectic manifold. Uh, sorry, symplectic vector of this. And, and what is the symplectic uh, form is given by the intersection pairing. Or if you take the, the, the dual, which is the cohomology, will be the Hodge operator. So you count the, the number of intersections from the right example. <coughs> form. 
Uh, so alpha i, beta i, uh, beta i is a symplectic. You choose it to be a symplectic basis, like in my picture. <coughs> And now, what, what you can show <coughs> is that uh, there exists uh, some uh, U, uj, which are holomorphic one form, so it means they are really contained in the first uh, homology group. Harmonic in particular, such that they are dual to the alpha i. So it means that the integral of alpha i over uj, the uh, uj over alpha i, is just uh, beta ij. So there are j of them. Uh, sorry, uh, h. h is the genus. <coughs> so this is uh, uh, something you can show. And now the period matrix is uh, just. The matrix given by the integration of these two over the beta cycles. So J the period matrix is defined to be J I J it is a H by H matrix. And is given by the integral over beta i of u j. That's the period matrix. And the theorem of Torelli says that this actually re uh, recovers the complex structure. And what you do, you embed uh, your surface into a torus uh, using this matrix. The so now the goal is uh, to recover the, this matrix from the Markov paper. Well, first, the idea would be that. Uh, what is the link between this, uh, this, these things? Here we would like to take a uh, geodesic representative of these cycles. And maybe we, we, we would like to integrate some, some holomorphic waveforms on these cycles. And we have to relate them to the Markian spectrum. So that's the main question. OK. So how to do that? So first. Huh? Uh, I need to use, uh, we need to use a theorem by Gis, Broma, We set up uh, two another geodesic form. On a given surface, <coughs> or actually topologically conjugate. Further conjugate. So when I mean topologically, it's uh, orbit equivalent. It's not a uh, true conjugacy. And for this, you don't need anything. No, no Markle no, no Mark spectrum. So what you do, you go to the universal cover. The universal cover for an analog surface is uh, uh, well, it's a genus bigger or equal to two. So it's, you know it's the disk. And between any <coughs> point on the boundary at infinity, so this is the universal cover, uh, if it's analog, you get uh, the unit geodesic of infinite length. And you do this for the second metric, you will get uh, another one. And the conjugacy is just uh, you map uh, each of these geodesic with fixed pair of points at infinity, one to the other, basically. You have to prove it's further. So this is true. So if I know as well for negative number, this is also true. Then the second thing, which is due to the uh, now. And Einstein is that uh, if Lg1 equal Lg2, uh, it turns out that the. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. This is really not. This, this is quite easy to, to, to check uh, first by Leipzig that if you have the same Markian spectrum and you are topologically conjugate, 
you're actually time-preserving conjugate. So it means that um, there, exists a, there exists an F going from the unit tangent bundle uh, of G1 to the unit tangent bundle of G2, such that uh, F composed with the flow Tg1 is equal to F Tg2 composed with F. So this is basically the consequence of this theorem plus this. But now Feldman and Einstein, they prove something more. They prove uh, the fact that uh, this uh, conjugacy is actually quite regular as C1. Because uh, okay, one has to check that this conjugacy preserves the contact structure. But they prove that this, this F is C1. This is a uh, uh, Feynman and Einstein. And now this has been so. This is like the third step. The third step was shown actually by Dolayave, Morian. They actually show that F is smooth. In fact, the conjugacy is smooth, so it's much better than C1. So if we have two others of the flow, they have the same Martian spectrum, they are actually smoothly conjugate and time-preserving conjugate. Okay. Now, I want, my, I want to, to, to recover my pair, the, this parallel matrix from the Martian spectrum. Okay, I will need to use... Uh, a little bit of uh, geometry of surfaces. And so let's look at the geometry of surfaces. So if I look at the tangent bundle of uh, SGJ of sigma, okay, let, let me fix the metric so far. I don't put a J. So this is the geodesic flow. The vertical bundle, the vertical vector field, and then there is a, a horizontal vector field. So this is, this is horizontal, and the splitting is uh, global. So what is v? V is tangent to the fiber. So if you point, uh, if you take a point x in sigma, you look at the fiber. So this is an S1 fiber. And V, v is just uh, the, the generator of rotation in the fiber. That's the D over D theta. If you like SL2, you, can, you get this uh, explicit uh, thing uh, where these are matrices in SL2, in little SL2. Now there is a, a fact which, is, which was I think discovered, at least in this generality, by, by Gilmin and Kazan. Which is a fiber decomposition. Of functions. On uh, S G sigma. So they found a, a very nice property of the, this uh, unit tangent bundle, which is that because you have uh, this vertical vector field which is tangent to, to, to the circles, we can actually decompose them, decompose the, uh, a function uh, over S G sigma uh, in terms of Fourier series in, in, in these fibers. And this can be made globally, actually. The H, the horizontal field, is unique, or...? Yes. 
I mean, there is a can. H is just here. Uh, what can we take out of the two others? So, what it says that if u is a, a function which is L2 in SG, so with respect to the Liouville measure, then uh, one can decompose. So U, U of I put X and V, so X is the base point, V is the, the tangent vector at X. Uh, we can decompose it in Fourier series. Like this. And what satisfies UN? It satisfies that if you apply this vertical vector field, is equal to I uh, N times UN. Okay. So, in local coordinate, in local isothermal coordinate, the metric G, you write it under the form exponential rho times dz squared. So, z is x plus i y, is their complex coordinate induced by, by G. Uh, you can write any z as exponential minus rho over 2 plus theta z over dx plus sin theta z over dy. So this will be a unit tangent vector. Sorry, it's little bit here. And you should. Mm. This vector can be written like this. So rho is rho of x here. And UN is, has, has this form. It's a UN of x by an exponential i n theta in this coordinate. It's just a Fourier model for the n. Of course, this is a local form, but, but, but this is like a global function. Global is, so here, what is UN, actually? It's a, you can view it as a section. You can view it as a section of a bundle over sigma, and this bundle is just the nth power of the uh, of the bundle. And this is kind of positive. So U n, in fact, can be viewed U n. In fact, you can view it as a let's say a two section over sigma. To the nth power of t10 sigma uh, star. And, and the idea is that if you compute a z over v in these local coordinates, but what you get is uh, quite straightforward, you get uh, <coughs> minus rho over 2. Time exponential i. <coughs> so I exponential i and theta is nothing more than dz n contracted with v divided by a, a function. And you can check, check by, by changing local coordinate that this is really globally well defined, this un. So un is really, you can, un is a function on the unit tangent bundle, but you can view it also as a section of the nth power of the canonical bundle. This is true for n positive. If n is negative, you have to change to 0, 1, and this will be dz bar. I don't know if everybody is familiar with this decomposition, but this is really useful for, uh, for working. OK, so now. This is true for L2 function, but this is a, it turns out that it's also true for distribution. Mm. So if you have a distribution, you can also decompose it under this form. Uh, and UN will be a distributional section of sigma plus. Bundle. Okay. So now, let's look at the flow. 
a very nice property is that this ve the vector field x, if you look uh, uh, at its action on this uh, Fourier decomposition, it turns out to be very nice. And this is very close to the SL2 case. It decomposes into two parts. Eta plus is mapping, uh, let's say, C infinity of sigma power n. Uh, this, this, one, this, this thing I will, I will write hn is helpful for this. Uh, I have to be careful with this. Yeah, let, let me work with smooth functions so far. <laughs> I don't get trouble with this issue. So this is everything. What I said is true. It's just that if I put infinity. So eta plus turns out to map omega n to omega n plus one, and eta minus to omega n minus one. So it means the flow can be, the vector flow also can be decomposed into two parts. One is raising this uh, Fourier mod by one, and one is decreasing by one. They are really like these ladder operators uh, for SL2. If you have, have looked at the representation theory of SL2, mm -hmm. you get this ladder operator, and they are the equivalent. And what's nice is that they really exist in viable curvature. So this was discovered by Gimian Kazan, I think. And what is even nicer is that this eta plus and eta minus, you can really compute what they are when they act on these uh, guys. And they look like d-bar operator. So let me write this. And this is where the complex structure appears. So now. Um, so one nice property that I will use is that if u1 belongs to let's say omega1 or even h1 and if eta minus of u1 is zero um, and, and I, I could do the same with, uh, with u0 and omega0 and x0, and in general for um, I can put an n here. Well, actually, uh, it's an equivalence. That d bar of u n is zero. So this eta minus is really like a d bar operator. In fact, there is a factor here, but uh, at least in, in terms of kernel, it's it really all the guys of order n which are killed by eta minus are actually holomorphic section of the nth power of the canonical bundle. So you see the complex structure here. Popping up, popping up. Okay. So now we will need to use. Uh, um, so I think I was at five. Maybe. We will need to use something that we will call holomorphic invariant distribution. What does it mean? So we say it's a definition uh, if and only if. So we say a distribution is holomorphic and invariant by the flow. If and only if it's killed by the flow and uh, uh, you 
equals sum of u n for n bigger or equal to zero in the Fourier series. So it means it has only positive Fourier series in the fibers. Very holomorphic because you know a holomorphic function on the disk can be can uh, can only have a uh, positive Fourier mode. So what's nice with this invariant distribution is that from what I said before, if you look at their first non-zero guy, their first non-zero Fourier Fourier mode. Uh, Corollary of the properties of eta plus plus eta minus x is that x u equals zero with u equals sum of u n for n bigger or equal to zero or in general n zero with n zero positive. So if there exists uh, and then zero positive such that these two properties hold, you just write your equation. You know that u plus uh, raised by one, u minus by one. You look at the first non zero guy. <coughs> you will deduce that eta minus of u and zero is zero. Just from the equation. And this is equivalent to saying that d bar of u and zero is zero. Which means that the first guy is going to be. It's a polymorphic uh, uh, section of uh, T10 sigma star uh, tensor N0. Okay. So now we're interested in, period, in, in uh, 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 matrix period. So we, we, we would like to work with uh, N0 equal 1, because we want holomorphic 1 forms. We're interested in N0 equal 1, because then U1 is a holomorphic one form, which is what we want for a bed. So now there is a, a, a theorem which was proved by Paterna and Sarovuma. In 2014, and I have an alternative proof uh, in paper in 17. So in my in my paper, I use microanalysis. In, in the paper of Gabriel, you can winter they, they use a uh, um, uh, uh, software method, which is that. Uh, um, for any u1 holomorphic one form, there exists, not unique, but there exists a u which is an invariant holomorphic distribution and u has only positive for mod starting at, at 1. And the first guy is this U1. Okay. So if you fix the Fourier mode of order one, you can construct all the other Fourier mode in a way that X is zero. And how you can do this, roughly speaking, is that you solve. Of course, this works. Uh, if you look carefully, it works in negative curvature or maybe non-positive. But for Anosov, uh, it's more more tricky. But the idea is to solve uh, eta plus u n uh, equal eta minus u n plus 2 for any n uh, bigger than or equal to 1. So you know u1 is fixed. Then you try to construct u3. u3 you will solve uh, eta minus u3 equal eta plus u1. This is like a d-bar equation uh, or eta minus yeah, d-bar equation. You can maybe prove that uh, there exists a solution. 
And then you need some estimate to prove that when you sum everything, this is still a distribution. It does not blow too, too far, too fast as n go to infinity. So this is more or less the idea, at least in negative curvature. Yeah, but in the nonce of case, you don't have estimates. No, 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 no. Yeah, in the nonce of case, is more tricky. You, you need to rely on pest of identity, uh, or maybe you, what I was doing. OK, so we know, so this is a not so trivial theorem. This is a merge. But we know that there exists invariant distribution with prescribed first Fourier mod, which is a holomorphic, form, a holomorphic one form, and then no other negative uh, mod. OK. Can it start, could you start this from n0 to be 10? Yes, you, you could do it uh, for any n0 positive, actually. This, uh, this is uh, something I proved in my paper. But for, for, for this, for what I'm talking today, uh, I just need n, n equal 1 which was contained in, in Gabriel's paper. And in fact, yeah, no, anyway. OK, so now, this is where my colloquial analysis is coming, not in a very tough way. Uh, what can, one can say, what about the wave form set? Huh? And because Gabriel introduced what is wave form set, I don't need to recall. What about the wave set of u? Well, you have to look at the equation. x u equals 0. So wave set is a subset of uh, t star s g sigma. x u equals 0 by ellipticity implies that the wave set is contained uh, in the xi in t star of s g sigma so that xi contracted with the geodesic vector field equals zero. So this T star, I want to decompose it as R or uh, V star plus R H star plus uh, R lambda, where this is the Lurie one form. And V star of V is one. We start of h is zero and, and, and conversely. So this is the dual decomposition, right? So this by this ellipticity, micro local ellipticity means that the wave set is contained in the characteristic set, which is zero. <coughs> now we know that the positive Fourier mode, the negative Fourier mode, are zero. And if you have a function on the circle which have only positive Fourier mode. It actually tells you something about the wave front set. It tells you that the wave front set is in a half plane. So, holomorphic, holomorphicity, holomorphism, which means that uh, basically u n equals zero for any n negative, imply by some Fourier, basic Fourier analysis that the wave front set is actually contained in all the xi. Uh, such that C V is positive. And this is property of having no negative Fourier. <coughs> it means that the, the, the tail uh, in the negative Fourier mode is fastly decaying, which is zero. So this is by this. So if I make a picture, I have this star, I have this star. It tells me that the wave set is in this region. And then the transversal direction is uh, lambda. But I, I mean the lambda equals 0 part. So the wave set has to be considered here. But in fact, by propagation of singularity, so this propagation of singularity, we know that the wave set and this is again very easy to prove, is invariant by the, the lifted flow, the lifted geodesic flow. It's related to, to the talk uh, that Frederick gave. So the lifted flow would be d phi t g inverse uh, transpose. d phi t g inverse transpose on a t star I have to hurry up a bit. 
So we know it's, it has to be invariant by the flow. But now, it's just a, an easy property from the geodesic flow that this uh, form to propagate by the flow cannot, it has to move. So if you propagate it in, in the future, it has to move a little bit, either this way or this way, and, and, and conversely. So it means that, in fact, the wave front set uh, has to be really in, in a cone uh, container in, in this half space. And in fact, the only invariant cone has to be contained between EU star and ES star. So these are just uh, invariant properties. So we know that the wave from set of U is contained in this cone. Now we have this cone. So we do this for the metric G1. Okay. This, this existence theorem, we, we, we know that there exists. We fix some. Now we fix a holomorphic one form. So the strategy now is first fix a holomorphic one form. U1 for G1. Then uh, find uh, an invariant distribution, a uh, holomorphic invariant distribution, U for xg1 with uh, u equals sum of un and bigger than 1, and the first guy is given by this u1. We know the wave from set. It's contained in this column of c. Now we look at the image. So uh, it's u f minus 1. So f was this smooth conjugacy. And because it's a smooth conjugacy, if you compose this, it turns out to be an invariant distribution for G2, for X2. Okay. Because the conjugacy is smooth, it maps invariant distribution to invariant distribution. But now we know that we know how the waveform set of a distribution moves by uh, pull back by diffeomorphism. And we know that F is mapping EU to EU, E star, e, 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 EU star to E star, and so on. They map the unstable to unstable, stable to stable, and the Liouville form to the Liouville form. So what are the solutions? So let's call it U prime. Now it means that the waveform set of U prime, there are four, there are four possibilities. It needs to be a cone. So it could be uh, it could be the U cone for this is for G2 now. It could be the U so this is EU star for G2. It could be the U cone, the lower cone, or these uh, these guys. But, but in fact, F is on top of identity, so it's preserving the, the orientation. And if you look at the orientation, it tells you that it cannot be in the red one. It has to be either the, this upper one or the lower one. So using the orientation, uh, orientation preserving property of F, it turns out that we can show that uh, this is either in C prime, which is this, this yellow guy, which is the uh, same as here, but for G2, or in the lower one. Uh, uh, maybe C prime minus. There are two possibilities. So let, let me assume it's in C minus. If it's in, if it's in. Uh, the lower one, uh, there is a trick to, to show that it cannot happen. But, uh, so basically, what, uh, what we have shown is from an invariant distribution from the first guy, we construct uh, by conjugation an invariant distribution for the second guy. And we know that the wave from set is going to be here again. But because the wave from set is here, it means that the, the, the tail of the Fourier series in negative mode has to decay very fast. Just by way from that property, it means that U prime huh? 
So a priori, they are Fourier mode of all order. But in fact, un prime, uh, okay, in this case, just from the wave concept property, we can show that these are actually smooth functions, smooth section of bundles, or actually they are in omega m. Yes, here that's the decomposition with respect to G2. Yes, G2. So it turns out that they are big O of uh, n, min n minus infinity, just by wave concept uh, property. Because we know the wave concept has to be in the Euclid. Yeah. And now, uh, there is something called Pestoff identity. This is for n negative? Uh, yes, n negative. So it's really the omega n with n negative. So it's mm -hmm. the, the anti holomorphic uh, yes. Best of identity, actually, uh, it's an energy identity which will tell you that if you decay very fast uh, in one side and you're invariant, so it turns out that uh, I see uh, uh, equals zero uh, okay, plus with uh, u prime plus equals the sum of u n for n equals for n bigger equal to. Okay, I, I, I skipped a little detail about zero, but, uh, but basically, just by this uh, property plus some energy identity, we can actually uh, show that uh, the positive, uh, the, the, the part of this distribution which starts at one, is actually also invariant uh, by the flow. And then the first guy has to be a holomorphic one form. The polymorphic one form for G2. So we have constructed a, a way to, 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 to go from a holomorphic one form for G1 to a holomorphic one form from G2 using the conjugacy. And now, just to, in two minutes, maybe this is okay. I'm going to give you the, the, the last part uh, in two minutes, the last thing, which is how to recover the pair of matrix from this. It's based on a very nice observation that Thibault made, actually. Okay. <laughs> Which is an intersection pairing. So we take uh, gamma to be uh, 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 for instance, so this one on the surface. The one which rep which represents your homology class. Now you you look at uh, s gamma is just p minus one of gamma, where p is the projection on the base. Okay, so you take your geodesic and you add the fiber. This is exactly what uh, Gabriel was doing in his intersection pairing thing. So you take gamma, so it's a cylinder. It's a uh, it's a torus. It's a torus uh, sitting in, in, in S uh, G sigma. So you can view it as a current. And now, if you take your invariant distribution, U, the polymorphic invariant distribution, for G, you multiply by D lambda, which is the Liouville form. The Louisville two form. So this is an invariant distribution. You integrate on this uh, S gamma, this torus. So of course to make to, 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 to check that this makes sense, you have to use the wave front set, because this is a distribution. It turns out that this current U uh, D lambda is zero. So this is a closed, you can do this as a closed two current. And if you compute this with a you actually get the integral of gamma q1. So you can relate the integral of the holomorphic one from the first non-zero guy on the geodesic gamma 
in terms of uh, a pairing of uh, this distribution on this. And basically, using this, you write your pair of metrics. This is given by these guys. You use your conjugation. Your conjugation tells you that in our distribution or not in our distribution, you will have two form is not to you will two form. Uh, this guy is not quite mapped to the S of, of the image geodesic, but because this is a closed form, and because F is homotopic to an entity, uh, only the homology class of this current is playing a role. And this is how you recover the paired matrix. Yes, Okay, for everybody. So there are two ingredients. One is the existence of holomorph of uh, holomorphic invariant distribution. The other one is uh, this wave concept analysis, and, and the, the last one is this intersection theory, uh, which in some sense is uh, has inspiration from the proof of Otal. Otal used intersection of geodesic. Here we use not intersection of measure, but intersection intersection of invariant distribution with this. Geodesic or lift uh, or the geodesic. Yeah. And there is a little uh, one uh, last thing that I didn't say that you, when you use Torelli, you, you, you recover the conformal class, but not with uh, you, you you don't have you, have, you don't have the Teichmuller class. And to apply Catok, you really need the Teichmuller class. So then when you we need to use uh, an argument of Teichmuller theory, if you have the same Markle spectrum, this is again true for any finite cover. So we use this argument on any finite cover. And uh, there is an argument that was proposed by uh, Maxim Wolf that uh, if it's true for any finite cover, you can actually show that uh, uh, this f is actually homotopic to an entity. Uh, the isometry you get, uh, sorry, the, conf the conformal equivalence is actually homotopic to an entity. So that's the proof. Quick questions for Gola. Yes. It seems rather important that the conjugacy is C infinity to make all your arguments work. Mm -hmm. So, how does it work? Is, uh, no, actually, uh, it is not necessary for this waveform set uh, because the invariant, C1, but, uh, yeah, the invariant distribution, in fact, the one we construct, we can construct them in H minus epsilon for any epsilon. So uh, you would not need a lot of uh, regularity, maybe C1 or, or C1. So how does it work with C1 uh, property of Feldman or Einstein, do you know? Sorry? How do we prove uh, that this is C1, the conjugate C? Can we do this C1? Uh, uh, well, I think it's a bit like... Uh, uh, well, it's, it's a bit like this... Um, I'm not quite sure I know really, but I, I assume this is related to also probably a similar type of argument that uh, when you put the, the, the relation is a bit more regular in dimension 2. The, the layout is really based on this uh, journey uh, argument. You know. Once you know that you have reached a certain regularity, you can use kind of the swap for uh, analytic argument on the solution. Uh, I don't know, maybe Chris knows. Uh, And in fact, in this argument, if, if we assume the two flow are conjugate, uh, most of the proof uh, would apply without the of property, actually. The only thing that we don't know is this uh, existence of the invariant distribution with prescribed uh, U1. If you just assume no conjugate point. Mm -hmm. So that's one question. If you can, if you can show that for uh, a given holomorphic one form, you can construct an invariant distribution with a prescribed U1 for manifold with no conjugate point. I think our, our argument would show that uh, you can recover the complex structure. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. Okay, so if not, let's thank Golan again. <laughs>